Good evening, councillors, officers and members of the public gallery. Welcome to this ordinary council meeting being held on Monday, the 20, 20th of March, 2023, at the Shire of Serpentine, Jaradale. I declare this meeting open at 7pm and would like to acknowledge that this meeting is being held on the land of the traditional land of the Noongar people, and we pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to advise members of the public gallery that this meeting is being audio recorded in accordance with council policy. If you're asking a public question or making a statement or deputation to the meeting, this will be audio recorded. Members of the public are reminded that no other visual or audio recording of this meeting by any other means is allowed. Item one on tonight's agenda is attendances and apologies. We have nil apologies for this evening. Item number two is public question time. Item 2.1 is response to previous public questions taken on notice. They have appeared in the agenda and will be published in the minutes of this meeting. Item 2.2 .2 is public questions. Can I please ask Mr Christopher Jacobs to come forward and ask your questions this evening? Thank you, Councillor Rich. Christopher Jacobs, PO Box 494 in Byford. My first question for the Shire President, Councillor Rich. At the OCM meeting on the 21st of November 2022, item 10.1.15, Tosha proposed to install a radio, TV and communication tower on lot 116245 Keenan Street, Whitby. Councillor Rich put forward an alternative motion to move the position of the tower. Prior to this OCM meeting, did you, Councillor Rich, personally have any contact with either the landowners or neighbours regarding the moving of the tower? Yes. Question two. Prior to the 21st of November 2022 OCM, did you, Councillor Rich, personally have any contact with Telstra regarding the moving of the tower? No. Question three. During the debate of the alternate motion that you, Councillor Rich, put forward, you were asked by another councillor, and I quote, have Mr and Mrs Ritchie been consulted about the setback? Your response, and I quote, my understanding is they have been spoken with, is they have spoken with neighbours and they were not overly concerned as long as the tower is approved and goes in to provide better coverage than what the North Mundajong Whitby area currently has. So Councillor Rich, how do you come, how did you come to the understanding that the landowners had spoken to their neighbours? I came to the understanding that the landowner had spoken to their neighbours through conversation and the fact the landowners and neighbours had met. Thank you. Could I please ask Mr Bruce Caphorn to come forward and ask your questions this evening? Good evening, Sir President and Councillors. Um, first question I have is how can a shire infringe a person for parking when there is insufficient marking and information for people that they are committing an offence? I'll ask the Director of Development Services to respond to your first question this evening, please. Thank you, Madam President, <clears throat> and thank you for the question. Um, Unfortunately, it's not possible to answer the specific question as there is insufficient information to determine the location in question or whether something is being alleged. Officers advise that per the Shire's Parking and Parking Facilities Local Law 2014, Section 4.1 includes the provisions pertaining to control of parking and stopping. And um, Mr Capon, I'd be happy to meet with you to assist with your question further. Do you want more information about that particular location? Uh, West Byford Primary School, uh, Fishing Lane. Uh, there is no signage on the uh, area saying no parking or no standing. There is one yellow line 
And in my 42 years of driving experience, I had not known what a yellow line meant until I found out after a conversation with the um, some of the time. Mr. Capon, given the fact that the officers have responded to your question and you have provided further information this evening at the meeting, I would recommend that you take the conversation offline with the officers tomorrow morning and provide them with the exact location so that they can give you a more detailed response, please. Okay, with the other two questions I have for them. Right. You can ask the other two questions now if you like. Other residents adjacent uh, to the yellow road markings aware that they are not allowed to park, stand, or have a taxi collect them from the front of their properties while this road marking is there. I'll ask the Director of Development Services to respond to your second question, please. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank you for this question also. Um, the Shire is not able to comment on the specific awareness that residents may or may not have. Um, more generally, though, the Shire's Parking and Parking Facilities Local Law 2014 includes a specific section 413 uh, subsection 3, which states a driver shall not stop at the side of a carriageway with a continuous yellow edge line. Uh, just to add further, the State Government Department of Transport also maintain the handbook for WA road users, which is available uh, for free download. This includes information for road users to understand the requirements associated with a single yellow line on the edge of the road within WA. Does that include this particular building here? Because there's four cars illegally parked outside. Okay, bring that up with you tomorrow. Okay. Third question. How are new students, parents, existing parents at the schools informed of traffic restrictions and or and what steps were taken to ensure that all parents are made aware of this uh, road rule? I'll ask the Director of Development Services to respond to your third question this evening, please. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Thank you for the question. The Shire's Community Safety Officers, uh, bracket rangers, close bracket, undertake a warning period at the start of each school year for approximately two weeks, rotating between all schools within the Shire. Um, the Shire is also advised that schools send out their own updates regarding safe parking and access, given the range of pedestrians in the area. Thank you, Mr Capon. Can I please ask Mrs Lee Bond to come forward and ask your questions this evening? Explain in full detail what? Training, organisation, development, roadmap, training, objective, leadership program involves whether it is counsellors and or staff, how many people involved and what outcomes are expected for $50,765. Thank you, Mrs Bond. I will ask the Chief Executive Officer to respond to your first question this evening. Good evening, Mrs Bond. Thank you for the question. Um, there are two separate initiatives, both related to making the Shire a better place to work, reducing organisational turnover and improving staff satisfaction which is important to the ongoing success of the organisation with the aim of providing value to ratepayers. The first project is a preparation of a new organisational development roadmap. This document guides how the organisation develops and improves over the years to make the Shire a better place to work uh, and ensures we can attract and retain quality staff. Uh, the new organisational development roadmap will be presented to Council between now and June for Council's consideration. In the preparation of this document, an external company has been engaged to hold workshops and survey staff across the organisation on a range of topics. No councillors are involved in the workshops. There are a chance for staff to get involved in shaping the future of the organisation to meet the needs of the council and the community. I think 131 survey responses have been received. 
Uh, four workshops have been held to date involving 23 staff across the organisation on the purpose and mission of the organisation. Two further workshops on values occurring tomorrow with 21 staff registered. The second project is a leadership program which has been rolled out to managers first, which is the cost that appears in the payments you're referring to. Um, the executive team is now about to commence their leadership development program between now and the end of June. If this goes well and funding allows, a similar leadership development program we rolled out next year for coordinators and supervisors across the organisation. detail what the Shire Cleaners are tonic provide to the ratepayers of this Shire for $29,137.12 each month and full details of a payment made to them for $12,045 for 12 days clean. I'll ask the Director of Infrastructure Services to respond to your second question this evening, please. For you, Madam President. Um, Thank you for the question, Mrs. Bond. The cleaners contract is for cleaning all shire buildings and the servicing of sanitary bins. The contract includes the supply of consumables and labor to maintain the buildings to standards specified in the contract. The amount of $29,137.12 uh, is the monthly cost of the cleaning of 44 shower buildings based on a schedule. Some shower buildings are cleaned daily, uh, for example, public toilets, and some are cleaned less frequently. Uh, for example, Briggs Park uh, change room are cleaned twice weekly, and the pavilion in, at Briggs Park is cleaned uh, three times a week. The schedule was developed with input from responses received from community over the last couple of years and standards determined by officers. The amount of $12,045 was for a site visit and a one-off clean to various shower facilities to bring certain facilities to an acceptable benchmark for iconic property services, PTY, LTD, to take over the contract. This clean was done in accordance with an agreed cleaning schedule and specification. It's worse when you break it down and it works out for more than a thousand dollars a day for the 12 days. Find in full detail what was provided and by whom for $16,103.42 for the Australia Day Breakfast 2023. I'll ask the Director of Community Engagement to respond to your third question this evening, Mrs. Bond. Thank you for the question, Mrs. Bond. The amount of $16,103.42 was paid to Focus Promotions, an event management company who assisted with delivering the Shire's Australia Day breakfast and citizenship and award ceremony. The breakfast component was $8,617.12 and included setup and pack up of the following, five barbecues, bay marees, marquee, generator and power leads, reusable cups, plate service, trestle tables, chairs and tablecloths for 250 people. The award ceremony component was $4,739.30 and included two parking marshals, audiovisual system and equipment and portable air conditioning units for the stage. And finally, staff labour was $2,750, which included event set up and packed down for both the breakfast and award ceremony. Could I please ask Miss Pauline Holmes to come forward and read your questions this evening? Madam President, question one. On page 38 of the creditors' payments of the 28th of May 2018 OCM, can you please tell me who the Australian Institute of Company Director Training was for and at the cost of $7,235? Thank you. I will ask the Director of Corporate Services to respond to your first question this evening. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Good evening, Mrs. Holmes. Thank you for your question. Uh, Councillor Rob Coles. Question two. Does the Shire hold a certificate of completion for this training? I'll ask the Director of Corporate Services to respond to your second question this evening. Thank you. Uh, no, it was not the practice to obtain certificates of completion at that time. 
In researching a, a response to a public question at a recent council meeting, officers contacted all training providers that had provided training to councillors in the period posed by that question, where certificates of completion were not immediately available to be sourced from the Shire held records. In this case, the Australian Institute of Company Directors advised that whilst its privacy policy <clears throat> prevented disclosing details or providing a certificate, a copy of the certificate, they confirmed verbally that the councillor had completed the training. Question three, if not, how does the Shire know that this training was ever completed? I will ask the Director of Corporate Services to respond to your third question this evening, please. Uh, which is, as per the aforementioned verbal confirmation. Thank you. Madam President, I'm happy to put on record that I have a certificate from the Australian Institute of Company Directors at home. If any rate payer would like to see that, because I have completed the course. Thank you, Councillor Coles. That concludes public question time this evening. Item three is public statement time. Public statement time. Uh, can I please ask Miss Kirsten Baldwin to come forward and read your statement, please? In response to 10.1.7, the proposed radio, TV and communications installation at long, Lot 116, 245 Kings My name is Kirsten Baldwin of Lot 117, 223 Kings I thank you in advance for your time given tonight to hear my concerns with this application. I am the resident and landowner of a directly neighbouring property. The proposed tower will be located less than 200 metres from our residence and despite raising our concerns in September 2022 during the comment collection, I am yet to receive any correspondence from the Shire or Telstra to discuss the proposed development. I have concerns that the Shire officers and other representatives have been misleading and have withheld information and councillors in regards to this proposed development. This was evident during discussion at the November 2022 Ordinary Council meeting, where the alternate motion was passed as councillors were given the impression neighbouring properties had been consulted and would not be impacted, which was not true. Telstra noted in their development application that the proposed location was within a bushfire, bushfire prone area, yet as noted in the clause 67 checklist, attachment three, they have not considered the suitability of the land for the development, taking into account the possible bushfire risk. The proposed site is a significant fire risk with dangerous fuel loads and a clear disregard of any fire hazard reduction requirements. I do not feel comfortable with there being increased vehicle and equipment movements on the property in relation to the construction and maintenance of the tower, considering the increased fire risks at this particular property. Telstra claims that the visual impact on neighbouring properties will be minimal. However, there is no evidence or depiction showing actual consideration of the sight lines as viewed from the adjacent street and properties. Given that the development will be 35 metres high, I disagree with the assumption that the development will only be marginally visible from our property and other neighbouring properties. When the motion to really relocate the tower was approved in November 2022, the Ordinary Council meeting, Council agreed that the proposed site 53 metres setback on Cannon Street will have an adverse impact on the visual amenity and streetscape of the area, even with landscaping. This section of Cannon Street is a high traffic country town style street, which acts as the main entry and exit for residents of the new Whitby residential development and surrounding acreage properties. This is not an appropriate location for this development. In the guidelines associated with the Western Australian State Planning Policy 5.2, telecommunications infrastructure. It states that unless it is impractical to do so, telecommunication towers should be located within commercial, business, industrial and rural areas and outside of identified conservation areas. 
I refer to the Monday Drum District Structure Plan 2020 as contained in the officer's report. The subject site is placed within a current and future residential area rather than nearby future commercial, business, and industrial areas. I understand that there is a need for this infrastructure within that area. However, I feel the subject site has been selected for convenience rather than with consideration of the current and future use of the subject site and surrounding area. For these reasons, I would hope that the application as presented be refused and an alternate location be proposed, which aligns with government requirements and is consistent with maintaining the visual amenity character of the area. Thank you. Thank you. Can I please ask Mrs. Lee Bonds to come forward and read your statement this evening? How long is this nonsense going to continue? Read dummy spits by particular people who cannot get what they want. Is the norm going to be, it must be your way, or you will continue to hold up meetings and create animosity because of desperation? True leader does not bully and works to build a framework of cohesive and amicable intelligence. Sorry, forgot. However, I still have the right to believe in honesty, integrity, transparency, and fairies in local government. Surely someone should be keeping tabs on how much money is wasted through cleaning of shire buildings. I'm an expert in this field, and I see no reason why we are paying so much for cleaning services. The amount paid each month and all the extras is pathetic. Stop the gross waste and use the money for rate pay and needs. Sometime now, question and statement time has been predictable by one person on a regular basis, and blind Freddie can see exactly what is going on. Let's try and make the recreation centre and vibe for safe for users instead of little manipulating setups and pretend concern. Thank you, Mrs Bond. Can I please ask Mr Gavin Healy to come forward and read your statement this evening? Good evening, councillors and members of the public artillery. In response to 10.17, Close radio, TV, and communication installation in Block 116, 545 Street, Vicky. I stand by my original statement presented on February 2023. And to this date, to my knowledge, there has been, hasn't been an adverse outcome from the recommended investigations. I understand the need for better telecommunications in this area, as I have lived here for 30 years and, had, and have had telecommunication outages from days to weeks and up to four months on all copper infrastructure while trying to run a business depending on telecommunications. This, this objection by myself and my family is about the proposed property, not about people having better access to telecommunications in the area stated above. There is plenty of open public space in the area which would benefit everyone with less impact to individual landowners. At the 21st November 2022, Ordinary Council meeting, President Michelle Rich moved a motion to relocate the Telstra, new Telstra monopole base station to 170 metres from Keener Street, boundary, seconded by Councillor D'Agostino, who, after seconding this, queried the location and surrounds as he had limited knowledge of the location. How many other councillors had not visited this site, except for major infrastructure development before accepting the motion? <clears throat> and if the original proposed site of 53 metres was not acceptable, why would this site be acceptable now? At the Ordinary Council meeting on the 21st of November 2022, President Rich stated that Richie's had the landowners of the subject site has spoken with neighbours, but not with us, one of the closest neighbours. Surely if all the directly impacted neighbours opposed the decision, this would carry a bigger weight than neighbours further away from the development. At the Ordinary Council meeting on the 20th of February 2022, there was a motion moved and passed to defer any works on the above location until the 20th of March 2023, today, Ordinary Council meeting. On the 21st of February 2023, the next day, Council deferred a decision until the 20th of March. 
Ferris, surveyors, who work for Telstra, were on this site, 53 metres from Keenan Street, the original proposed site, at 7.30 a.m. to survey and peg the tower location. Who notified them to start work at this location, not knowing that the council had deferred the decision until the March meeting? I came contacted Councillor Duggan at 8 a.m. on the 21st of February, 2023, and she advised me to contact the CEO, Paul Martin, which I did at 8.10 a.m. And he said he would do, he said he would be the first thing he would see to when he got the work done that day, when he got to work that day. There are surveyors at this location all day. And approximately 1 p.m., I visited the Shire office and spoke with Ashley Nair, who phoned me back at 3.15 p.m., advising me that Telstra were aware of the work being done. My concern is there would now be a cost for this work done at 53 metres and consequently would put pressure on councillors to put the tower here. I organised for myself and my wife to have a meeting with Andrew Trossick, Director of Development, on the 7th of March 2023, a follow up on the proposed location of 116 Kingman Street. At the meeting, at the beginning of the meeting, Andrew communicated that the location of 53 metres was going to be Council's only recommendation at the March Council meeting. During the meeting, I asked Andrew if Council were going to organise a consultation period with all directors and affected landowners, and the answer was a flat no. So where is the consultation, as was recommended by Council at the 20th February Ordinary Council meeting? Still no consultation with us from the start until now. If any councillors have bothered to read the trolling comments on the Wiki community Facebook page, they will see the results of no honesty, transparency and accountability that Shire always maintains it does. Comments on this page have said, why wasn't there consultation so that all landowners can have the input and agree on a location? In summary, I oppose the new monopole base station development being at lot 116245 King Street, Whitby, on the grounds there is plenty of open public space available in this area with minimum risk for all ratepayers to benefit from Delco infrastructure. Kevin Healy. And excuse me, can I ask one more thing? Previously, since 21st 2022, Councillor Atwell has said he's got a vested interest in the property. Why is he here tonight? Right, that no, you can't. Thank you, Mr. Healy. Councillor Atwell has declared an interest, and when the matter is discussed, he will leave the chambers. Thank you. Can I please ask Miss Lisa Brazier to come forward and read her statement this evening? Good evening, councillors. Lisa Brazier, PO Box 18, Monday John. Firstly, um, I'd like to commend the officers and staff involved in putting together the West Mundajong Industrial Stakeholders Forum several weeks ago. The West Mundajong industrial area is extremely complex and potentially pro problematic with every landowner having very different circumstances. Whilst we have come together before, um, I felt this was the first meeting where everyone was spoken to in a way that we could all understand the process without multiple agency acronyms being used. Uh, we were listened to as a group and commitments were given. The facilitator was outstanding and it was refreshing to listen to the work that the Shire officers and staff have done to attract businesses to the precinct. That is not something that has been recognised within the community. Councillors, as a Shire, we are competing with every other LGA to attract businesses to choose to call the Shire of Serpentine Gerardale home. It would be fair to say that over the years, we do not have a great track record of working collaboratively with businesses, the most recent being Telstra and the Monopole debacle. It beggars belief what has happened around this table on this issue. So our federal Liberal member, Andrew Hastie, was successful in lobbying to have a telecommunications monopole installed for the residents surrounding Whitby. This was part of a $28 million investment package for urban fringes of our major cities and was announced on the 21st of April, 2022. A site was found and the motion was brought before council last November, 2022 for installation. Chair President put up an alternate motion to relocate the position of the monopole. When asked in debate, had all parties been consulted with the new site, 
the Shire president responded, she understood they had. This turns out not to be the case, and we see in February 2023 a revocation motion put forward to cancel the alternate motion and move the tower back to the original position. However, that revocation motion did not go through in its entirety. As you all voted to retract the alternate motion and defer the position of the monopole till tonight's meeting, where it is proposed to go into the original position. Why could this have not occurred at the February meeting is beyond me, and nothing seems to have changed since that meeting. So the implications for your decisions on my business are, I do not have ADSL, not NBN running past my front door. I rely on mobile broadband for my internet and phone coverage. I am with Telstra, and because of our existing distance, because of our distance from existing Telstra towers, we float between 3G and 5G surfaces. What does this mean? My phone conversations can require me to ring the person back up to six times as the signal jumps from 3G to 5G. Streaming services are not an option for us as there are no unlimited internet plans. Downloading software upgrades can take several goes and there is a continual dropout when using any cloud-based programs. Whitby residents continue to complain that they cannot make phone calls inside their houses. As councillors, you're elected to represent the residents and ratepayers, and there are times that you will have to make difficult decisions. This does not seem to be one of them. This seems from an outsider's perspective as either political or personal. Either way, neither have a place in this council chambers. But I respectfully ask councillors when debating in the future and statements are thrown around the table, that when querying those statements, you do so by requesting a definitive answer of yes or no. Your actions on this item are embarrassing and are not helpful when future funding opportunities come our way to attract businesses to invest within the Shire. Telecommunications are the responsibility of the federal government. So we look incompetent as a Shire, if there is a next time, versus those LGAs around the council that were able to install their monopole without drama. We have potentially annoyed Telstra, who will need to reschedule the installation, and the people you are supposed to represent, you seem to have little or no empathy for their situation. Businesses look to shires and councils that they can work with, and when you as councillors carry on around the table, as you have on this matter, it is embarrassing. There is a time and a place for alternate motions. Please use them wisely. On this, account, on this occasion, you councillors have made a mockery out of this, not the Shire officers or the staff. It must stop. Why would anyone want to invest and risk their business in the Shire with what is going around the table at the moment? Thank you, Ms Brazier. Can I please ask Ms Pauling Holmes to come forward and read your statement? At the Premier ACN, I asked questions surrounding the majority of councillors going out for dinner. I was supplied with a response from the Shire officers. During the adjournment of the meeting, Councillor Coles followed me and outside and stated that Councillor D'Agostino, Councillor Duggan and Councillor Mack and himself all went out for the um, dinner. Following the SCM held on the 2nd of March, where the majority of councillors were meant to represent the community, voted to not even hear the information Councillor Stroughton spoke to a group of community members and stated that we couldn't have a total spill because certain councillors would lose their seats and have to re-stand. When a councillor is going to understand that this is about community and not councillors, how does the community have faith in council and the shire when we have councillors voting for their own benefit and what not and what and not what is best for the whole shire. Thank you, Ms Holmes. That concludes public statement time for this evening. Item four is petitions and deputations. We have a deputation from Mr Rhys Hendy and Mr Matthew Elliott from Accord Property regarding item 10.1.5. Development application proposed showroom and fast food takeaway development 
21 showrooms and five fast food takeaway tenancies, lot 806 Southwestern Highway, Byford. Evening, everyone. <clears throat> I just want to say thank you to the mayor, the councillors, planning officers and their team that worked on this project. My name is Matthew Elliott, Development Director for Ford Property here in Western Australia. Ford Property is a national development company focusing on the delivery of commercial and retail developments such as this, as this development for Sunset Park. I'm also joined by my colleague, Liz Handy, uh, our development manager, who's here to answer any questions at Monday. Um, I'm simply here tonight to provide an overview of the background and speak in support of item 10.1.5, the proposed mixed commercial development at lot 806, Southwestern Highway, Bike. The Cord have identified and worked on this site for the past two years now. Uh, we identified this area of metropolitan Perth as one with a lack in supply of showroom and bulky goods stores, uh, whether it's supplying white goods, pet supplies, electrical goods, trade supplies, and automotive, uh, automotive parts, etc., uh, to the surrounding retail catchment. Uh, over 30,000 square metres of floor area is proposed as part of this development. The mix of showrooms enables the, the creation of a, a homemaker centre, uh, akin to the large homemaker centres you would find in Dandicott, Melville, Hannington, Osborne Park, and Mandra. The subject site is an optimal location for such offering, uh, fronting Southwestern Highway, and uh, is not too distant from the Bifield Town Centre. Broadly speaking, the proposed development will not only capture local trade, but capture a lot of trade from suburbs emerging throughout Perth's southeastern corridor, which extends to Byford, um, but specifically residents in the city of Armidale who also have a significant shortage of these type of offerings, given the probably the closest occupant centre is the, the one in Jandicott. Having read the agenda, we are very pleased to receive the Shire's recommendation to approve the proposed development to the Joint Development Assessment Panel. The board, along with our consultant team, have worked collaboratively with the Shire's planners since the project offset. The past two years has entailed a lot of design, planning and consultant reporting to ensure the overall design, layout and functionality is appropriate from not only a town planning perspective, but to ensure an appropriate interface with the residents to the south. We have also made improvements to the design and layout of the development following the Shire's uh, planning assessment. Uh, for example, a significant landscaping buffer is proposed along the southern boundary prior to works commencing on site. This will allow vegetation to mature and screen the development at the point of completing construction. Uh, further on, the public open space adjacent to Southwestern Highway will be increased and supported by additional landscaping uh, following the road realignment of where we're entering straight into uh, the subject property. Uh, we very much look forward to seeing this development at its completion. Um, significant funds have been spent on the design and approval process to date, particularly on traffic, bushfire acoustic, uh, landscaping, waste and stormwater consultants to support the design of the homemaker centre. Uh, subject to the feasibility of the project, significant funds will continue to be injected and employment opportunities will be created. We once again thank the Shire's officers for their favourable recommendation to the JADA. We would be pleased to answer any questions from the House. Thank you. Thank you. Item five is the President's report. Good evening and welcome to the Ordinary Council meeting for March 2023. The past month has been a particularly busy one for Serpentine Jaredale following the launch of the Shire's Shape Our Future SJ 2033 campaign. 
Shape Our Future is an extensive community engagement project which will inform our new strategic community plan and help develop the Shire's vision, values, aspirations and priorities over the next 10 years. The campaign aims to empower SJ residents to have their say on what they think our community needs most as we grow into the future. Many SJ residents will have already noticed Shire staff out in the community or seen the campaign across our uh, your social media channels. I encourage all SJ locals to get involved by attending one of our events, completing the Shape Our Future survey or simply stopping by one of the many pop-up booths around town for a chat. More information on the Shape Our Future campaign can be found on the Shire's website. Moving on, it was great to attend the West Mundijong Industrial Area Breakfast Forum event at Dome Cafe in Byford last month. The forum brought stakeholders and residents together to discuss the future of this vital economic precinct. It was fantastic to hear so many ideas on how the area can best reach its full potential. The Shire is now currently reviewing the outcomes of the engagement session. Another important project that took a significant step forward in recent weeks is the upgrades to the Byford Skate Park. Planning for the upgrades has commenced and it was wonderful to see so many young Byford residents attend the Shire's first community workshop for the project. The workshop gave local youth the chance to have their say on what they would like included in the upgrades with plenty of great ideas received as part of the engagement process. The Shire's 2023 road reseal program has commenced this month with both with both Baldwin Road and Hardy Road in Serpentine receiving upgrades. A total 10 roads will receive works as part of the program, which is jointly funded by the Shire and the Australian Government's Roads to Recovery program. This is a step forward on our journey to building a safer roads network for Serpentine Jarradale. Looking ahead to next month, the Mundijong War Memorial in Patterson Street will play host to the Shire's 2023 Anzac Day commemorations. The Shire is thrilled to be delivering this year's services in partnership with the Serpentine Jaredale RSL, which will include a dawn service, gunfire breakfast, processional march and a traditional commemorative service. I encourage all residents to come along and pay their respects with us. More information on the Anzac Day can be found on the Shire's website. Of course, before Anzac Day arrives, April will also bring about the Easter holiday break. I'd like to choose tonight by wishing I'd like to close tonight by wishing all SJ residents a happy Easter. Please remember to drive safely if you are hitting the road over the break. As always, my full calendar can be viewed on the following pages. Item six is declaration of councillors and officers' interests. We have a declaration from Councillor Rob Coles for item 10.1.4. It is an impartiality interest as he has worked with the applicant's wife. Impartiality both worked for a government department no longer working in the same area. Councillor Dave Atwell has declared a financial interest in item 10.1.7, proposed radio, TV and communications installation, telecommunications tower and associated infrastructure, lot 116245 Keenan Street, Whitby. The nature of the interest is financial. The extent of the interest is having done fire breaks for the landowner. Councillor Atwell will leave the chambers while this item is discussed. Councillor Dave Atwell declared a financial interest in item 10.1.9, West Mundijong Industrial Area, outcomes to discussion paper and forum. The nature of the interest is financial. The extent of the interest is I am a part owner of land in West Mundijong. Councillor Atwell will leave the chambers while this item is discussed. Councillor Tricia Duggan declared an impartiality interest in item 10.1.9, West Mundijong Industrial Area, Outcomes to discussion paper and forum. The nature of the interest is friendship. The extent of the interest is I have a friendship with Mr. Andrew Bett and Miss Lisa Brazier, 
whose family business, Wellstrand Proprietary Limited, is the landowner. Mr. Bett is a director of the company. Councillor Dave Atwell declared an impartiality interest in item 10.2.1, Keenan Park Recreation Precinct, Management Order Amendments. The nature of the interest is impartiality. The extent of the interest is long-term supporter of the project. Shire President Councillor Michelle Ridge declared an impartiality interest in item 10.2.1, Keenan Park Recreation Precinct Management Order Amendment. The nature of the interest is long-term supporter of the Sporting Precinct Project. The extent of the interest is supporting is supported of providing needed community facilities. Yes. Councillor Atwell has also declared a impartiality interest in item 9.2, which is Notice of Motion Keenan Park Recreation Precinct. Uh, it is an impartiality uh, interest with a long-term supporter of the project. I myself have declared a impartiality interest in 9.2, Notice of Motion Keenan Park Recreation Precinct as a long-term supporter of the Sporting Precinct Project and a supporter of providing needed community facilities. Move to item seven is confirmation of previous council meetings. 7.1 is the ordinary council meeting held on February the 20th 2023. Can I please have a mover for this motion? Thank you, Councillor Straws. Councillor Bias, are you happy to second? Thank you. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? Motion is carried unanimously. 7.2 is a special council meeting held on the 27th of February 2023. Can I please have a mover for these minutes? Thank you, Councillor Strawlands. Can I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Bias. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? 
motion is carried unanimously. 7.3, special council meeting held on the 2nd of March, 2023. Can I please have a mover for this motion? Thank you, Councillor Strawtons. Can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Bias. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? Motion is carried unanimously. Item eight is receipt of minutes or reports and consideration of adoption of recommendations of committee meetings held since the previous council meeting, which there is nil. Item nine is motions of which notice has been given. Item 9.1 is notice of motion, local government amendment bill 2023 and future council configuration. I'm happy to move this motion. Can I please have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Atchwell. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? Um, Madam President, I was wondering if I could use, use, if I could move an alternate motion, please. Well, actually, it's more of an amended motion, I think. Councillor Coles, the motion has been moved and seconded. So you are within your right to move amendments to that motion if you choose to. I'd like to. Thank you, Madam President. Um, the amendment is as per uh, the motion that's been put forward, but to remove paragraph 2B in its entirety. And then paragraph three, we'll just have to get rid of the word um, reintroduction. Sorry, Councillor Coles, nice to ask for a bit of clarification. So remove, remove, the amendment is to remove paragraph 2B entirely. Correct. And, and then in, para, in point three, remove the word introduction. Is that so correct? So it would have to be um, reconfirms its commitment to undertake a comprehensive ward and representation review, um, including, well, that considers wards prior to the 2025 ordinary local government election. Because my understanding is obviously there'll still be wards if this uh, uh, altered motion was successful. Councillor Coles, is that you happy with the wording on the board? It, that's good. Thank you, Madam President. Oh, 
Madam President, um, 10.12 of the standing orders talk about amendments must not negate the original motion. And uh, you know, we had this amendment issue recently as well, uh, at the last meeting. Um, so no amendment to a motion can be moved which negates the original motion or the intent of the original motion. So my suggestion, Madam President, would be that in the first instance, that's your call about whether that negates that amendment negates the motion, um, and uh, council can go from there. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Councillor Coles, it's my belief that it does negate the uh, the intent of the original motion in removing of. Uh, paragraph B and the removal of the word reintroduction. Back to the original. So, in that case, Madam President, the amendment is not um, is not able to be uh, discussed and dealt with, and the um, motion that's been moved and seconded. Can now be debated. Sorry, Madam President, I could ask before the Minute Secretary removes that. Um, I think it's proper that what has just happened is reflected in the minutes. Thank you. Is that state? But Madam President, we'll, the officers will deal with the minutes. The, the officers are responsible for making a record of the minutes, so I think the Council best continue debating the motion that's live and will officers will come back to the minutes uh, at some point in time. Thank you, Mr. Martin. We have a live motion with a mover and a seconder. Can I please ask again if there is anybody opposed to this motion? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Councillor Coles, did you have your hand up? Uh, I did in response to your question, Madam President, if there was anyone opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else opposed to this motion? Thank you, Councillor D'Agostino. I will open the debate on, on this item, given that I am the mover. Um, we have had, since Council have made previous decisions along these lines, the establishment and the amendment bill that has been provided provided to Parliament, um, which we now are able to see what that bill looks like. We are able to see what is included in that bill, what has not been included, and what the ramifications of the uh, reform that has been put to Parliament has for our community. In light of the legislation now being available, it is my view that we have a position where we can now make a well-informed decision on the information available and that is the reason for my motion on notice this evening. There has been a lot of conjecture and conjecture in the community over recent months in regards to the local government reform and what that means and, and how that would actually work in practice instead of just being a theory. Uh, we are a, an extremely fast growing shire. The latest figures that have been published that the shire is aware of uh, take our shire to 37,226 residents, uh, which is forecast that we reach that figure in 2023. We are growing at an extremely fast rate and to have good representation across our shire for our residents is imperative to get good results and have good decisions made around the council table here. We manage a budget in excess of $35 million every year, and it's a large 
amount of money. It, it is a lot of it is a huge amount of responsibility placed on councillors and for us to look at anything other than what is in this motion this evening, I think would be not representing our community as a whole very well. Thank you. Councillor Atwell, would you like to speak or reserve? Oh, well, you agree, Madam President. I agree with what, totally with what you said. Um, it has already been mentioned by one councillor in a previous occasion that it was very difficult to um, cover the entire shire. Um, so. Have, bearing that in mind, um, going down to six councillors would make that extremely more difficult. So I believe the eight councillors is a very good idea. Um, I mean, I've been involved before in a total spill of council. The world didn't end after the total spill of council. Uh, it carried on and um, it still continues to carry on. So uh, on that point, I support both those. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Well, Councillor Duggan. Thanks, Madam President. First of all, um, thanks, Councillor Atwell, for your comments. Certainly, um, there's been total spills in the past. However, I'm not convinced that they would have happened after receiving a community scorecard that was quite as negative as the one that we received recently, which showed us as being the second uh, worst performing uh, shire in the uh, LGA in the um, in the groups that were done by the people who carried out our performance scorecard for us. On the 30th of January, we agreed to three wards, six councillors and a popularly elected president. That preference was sent into the Local Government Advisory Board. So what's changed since then? Why would we review that decision? There's been, as Madam President mentioned, the Local Government uh, uh, Amendment Bill has been presented to Parliament. There's also a submission to the Local Government Advisory Board by a resident in the form of a petition. So if we start by uh, looking at the bill going to Parliament, the bill's not been legislated. It's in the Legislative Assembly. It's on its second read. It's not gone to the Upper House. It may go to the Upper House where there will be there may be amended amendments made before it goes back to the Legislative Assembly. So contrary to what we were just told, that we know what the final outcome is, that's actually not true. The truth is, by supporting this bill now, it's like signing a cheque based on what we think the final amount is going to be. We don't. What has been presented in the bill today is not new information. I've looked at it myself. It is a direct copy of what the Minister's letter said to us on September 20th last year. And I quote from page two of Mr Kerry's statement when he presented the bill for the second read, and if anyone's interested, it's actually being debated tomorrow morning. And this is a direct uh, extraction from the Hansard. Of the local governments that will be impacted, a substantial majority have been undertaking ward representation reviews to determine the specific arrangements for their council into the future. He goes on to say, however, for impacted local governments that do not complete this process, the bill will provide for orders to be made to implement changes through a completely new election in which the term of all councillors will end. To spill the council, any wards will be abolished and the number of council positions to be set will be based on the new limits set in the Act and new elections will be held to fill all those vacancies. That is one rule for all local governments from the Minister. As Madam President said, we are a unique shire. These rules put in place by the Minister don't tailor to our diversity, they don't tailor to our growth, and they certainly don't tailor to our residents' needs. And if I may point out one specific part of the quote, that is for impacted local governments that do not complete this process, the bill will provide for orders to be made to implement changes. But we have completed the process. Our submission for preference was made and it's been acknowledged. Therefore, this bill is irrelevant to this motion. That is supported by the feedback we got from Liam O'Neill in attachment two. 
as the Shire of Serpent John Geraldale has made a compliance submission to the LGAB by the required deadline, it appears the Shire has met the requirements of the voluntary pathway and the relevant provisions would not apply to the Shire. On the 30th of January, as well as voting to keep our wards, we voted to support a thorough ward and representation review after this year's election. That review would be budgeted for and timed so that the Shire staff can review our current and future needs, work within the guidelines offered by the Minister and offer solid options to our residents and our council to consider. By sticking to our current plan and keeping our wards, we maintain some semblance of councillor separation throughout the Shire. If we abolish wards, we risk at the 2023 election that all councillors elected may come from one corner of the Shire, which would make it very difficult to reintroduce, reintroduce wards and determine who would represent what wards in the future. The keeping of wards married with the detailed ward and representation review that will take place as we said it would here at Council after the election is the most suitable process for us to move forward. That is how the Shire, the residents and the Council can work together. We can make good decisions and we can build on those good decisions. The second thing that's happened has been the submission of the uh, petition to the Local Government Advisory Board by a resident. On the 7th of March, the CEO shared with us that petition and similar to what I saw on the 14th of February when I saw the petition myself at the local supermarket, the petition had no map attached and despite that, most people signed and wrote YES, yes, that they'd seen a map. It's imperative that we represent the views of the community. So for my own understanding, I asked some of the signatories to explain to me why they signed. When we went through the details of the petition, they realised they had signed to abolish wards when they thought they were signing to keep wards. They are now in the process of retracting their signatures. Before the 30th of January special council meeting, residents had the opportunity to express their views on the topic with the Shire uh, by filling out the online form, sending in an email or a letter. There were multiple ways that they could have known about this process, and yet we received, we received very few submissions. Residents also had the opportunity to present questions or statements at the 30th of January special council meeting or put forward a petition, but there was no presentation on the subjects. And yet here we have a petition that was not sent to council so we could hear the voice of our residents. Therefore, it was not constructive, as, constructive in us working together to find a solution before the vote. But it appears to have caused a significant amount of confusion to those who I've spoken to who signed it. We need to promote ways to move forward that unite all three components of our community, our residents, the Shire and the council. We also need to provide surety for our residents that with confidence that we are making good decisions. We can stand by our decisions and we can build on them. Supporting this motion will only create more confusion and angst in our community. On the 30th of January, we chose a process for a sensible and smooth transition to a decreased number of councillors as required by the Minister. For mine, and from what I've said tonight, nothing has changed. And for that reason, I reject this motion. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is there any councillor that would like to speak for the motion? There's no councillor that would like to speak for the motion. I will close for this item. I will actually raise the fact and remind Councillor Duggan that the Minister's requirement was not to reduce our numbers to six councillors plus a popularly elected president. It was to reduce our councillor numbers by one, down to eight, so that the popularly elected president position would be inclusive of a total of nine. The community submission and petition that has been put together by community members that were not happy with what they saw their council do has put forward a lot of information that has been misinformation put forward by councillors. As I stated earlier, we are moving towards a population of 37,226 in this year, 2023. The letter received by the Shire in September last year clearly stated 
from the Minister that councillor numbers and representation for our local governments would be based on population. That is our total population, because as an elected member, as a councillor in a local government, once you are elected, you are elected to represent the full community across the entire district, not the part that you choose, not the part where you think you have been elected from, but the entire population of your area. The numbers quoted by councillors that were used in the January 30th meeting was that we had a population of roughly 21,500, which misrepresents our community and does not provide representation to 41.5% of our community. That is a large section of our community that they have not represented in what they have put forward. As councillors, we are here to represent our full district, our full community, which means our full population. You certainly are, Mrs Bond. Yes, we have submitted a council submission to the Local Government Advisory Board. This motion does not suggest that we submit another submission to the Local Government Advisory Board. This submission is to write to the Minister. Now that the bill has been tabled in Parliament, now that we can officially see what is inside that bill, We've been told for, for many, many months of what they thought would be in it, but it hadn't been drafted. We had not actually had visual sight of the information until it was tabled in Parliament. Yes, it has to go through the Legislative Assembly. Yes, it will go to the Legislative Council, and then it will go back to the Legislative Assembly. There may be minor changes made. But given that the state government have a majority in both houses, I can't see there being a total overhaul or large changes to what has been tabled. We owe it to our residents to actually write to the minister now that we know what is in the bill and what has been tabled. We need to take into consideration the members of the public that spent their time to read a submission and to sign it. And we need to accept the fact that there was glaring inaccuracies in the information propagated by councillors in the information that was supplied to the Local Government Advisory Board in the submission that this council made. Thank you, councillors. I'm happy to take this to the vote. All those in favour of the motion before you? All those against? Motion is lost for five. Minute Secretary, can we please have the votes recorded? Councillor Bias has requested. Thank you. Item 9.2, motion of notion, notice of motion, Keenan Park Recreation Precinct. Can I please have a second? I'm happy to move the motion. Thank you. Can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Bias. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? I just had a question, if I may. Um, obviously, there'll be some significant additional work for 
the uh, officers on this. I just wasn't sure where we're at with the water availability for Kieran Park as it relates to you know, contributing additional resources. I understand the water is a major issue, and I just didn't know if there was any update on the water availability. Madam President, the Director of Infrastructure will probably give an update on this. Um, he had a meeting last week with the Department of Water. Well, Madam President, uh, thank you for the question. Um, we have completed the exploration of the uh, water in the superficial uh, aquifer. Uh, we've uh, sent the results of that investigation to Dua. And we've had the first meeting with the officers uh, from Dua last week, where they've um, given us some more work, investigative work to do in the uh, hydrogeological part of that aquifer. And Dua will also be doing some more investigation into opportunities to use or transfer um, our over under allocation in Briggs area to Kenan Park. So there's quite a bit of work to do before we can come to the conclusion of where that ultimate uh, source of water is going to be, which we think will uh, more than likely be the deep aquifer. Um, so that's uh, once that's concluded and we know the way forward, uh, we will bring the item to um, council uh, to a PCF and ultimately as a report as part of awarding or procurement, starting procurement of the construction tender. Professor well, Bergen, did you have a question? Uh, not so much a question, um, and I'm certainly not opposed to the motion, but I was wondering if Councillor Strange would consider a small amendment, and that is uh, to change the wording for uh, to prepare for council consideration and initial draft in points one and two. I would be happy to have the initial draft come before us before distributing it. Um, Thank so you. I'm happy with that amendment. Thank you. And is the seconder happy with that amendment? No. Uh, This one, both points one and two. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Vice. Is there anybody opposed to this? Sorry, question? Madam President, might I just ask the follow-up question to Councillor D'Agostino's question? Councillor Matt? Um, in regards to the water, did I hear correctly that there was going to be a reallocation from Briggs Park? I think that I think that all the options are being considered, um, and um, I think it's best to consider all the water issues as part of a detailed report that might come to council, rather than necessarily questions on this. So the officers are liaising with the department, and that might include reallocating some of the water that is not used at other locations that we currently have. Um, it may include uh, going into the deeper aquifer. There's a range of options there that are being looked at. All those will come back to council for formal approval um, as part of that process. Thank you. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? Motion is carried unanimously. Item 9.3, Notice of Motion, Nicholson Road, Rowley Road, Intersection. Madam President, I'd like to move the alternate officer's recommendation, please. Thank you, Councillor Bias. Can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Strange. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? Madam President, I'm not opposed. I just, maybe I missed something. Uh, is this the both sides of that intersection or both points of that intersection or? So the um, the attachment entertains a roundabout, replacing the current crossover. 
Um, I'd probably let the director answer that, but there is a detailed concept included as an attachment. Director? Through you, Madam President. Uh, so this is a black spot uh, project that City of Armadale are um, progressing. It's to realign the eastern and western leg of Raleigh Road, straighten them up into a roundabout where it will intersect with Nicholson Road through a roundabout. No, thank you very much. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? Motion is carried unanimously. Item 10 is Chief Executive Officer Reports. 10.1 is Development Services Reports. 10.1.1 is proposed road naming lots 487611 and 615 Arnold Road Serpentine. Happy to move the officer's recommendation, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Strange. Can I please have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Bias. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? Motion is carried unanimously. Item 10.1.2, proposed commercial vehicle parking, lot 1153 Craden Road, Oakford. Craden, sorry. Can I please have a mover for this motion? Thank you, Councillor Bias. Can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Atwell. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? Motion is carried unanimously. <coughs> Item 10.1.3, proposed civic building, Oakford Fire Station, lot, eight, Lake, lot 800, Pony Place, Oakford. Madam President, I would just draw the Council's attention to what I raised at the question and answer session, and that is in the officer recommendation point P5, needs to have the words February 23 added in there um, of the acoustic assessment. Um, it was uh, said there that um, there was no date included in the. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Can I please have a mover for this motion? Thank you, Councillor Bias. Can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Coles. Is there anybody opposed to this? Sorry, Madam President, I know I do say a long way away and sometimes you obviously miss my arm, but I was going to ask a question if that's possible. Councillor Coles. Um, thank you. So point P5, as the CO just uh, corrected, it's probably being a little bit pedantic, um, but do we have a date in February? Because you'll see the other P1, P2, P3 actually has dates. So if we just make it complete and have P5 as a date in February if possible. Just might ask the Director of Development Services if there's an actual Date. Thank you. If you can just give me a moment to pull up the document. Councillor Coles, are you still seconding the motion or is that a question? No, absolutely. I was happy to second pending that, but uh, I'm sure the director will be able to find the date. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the, the, the indulgence of the small delay out uh, of the 27th of February. Thank you, Director. Thank you. Is there anyone opposed to this motion? Motion is carried unanimously. 
10.1.4 proposed single house lot 14 5 Callet Drive Darling Downs. Madam President, I just have a question in relation to this one. For the director, um, just in terms of the uh, request to locate the building outside the um, building envelope, has there been an explicit reason to um, warrant that request or is it just they don't want it in that location? Like, is there a reason preventing in some way development within the building envelope? Director? Uh, thank you for the, the question um, through you, Madam President. Um, I guess pointing to the location that they've erected the outbuilding and water tank has been the predominant uh, contributing factors um, to the decision or to the request by the um, uh, applicant. Naturally, there is an opportunity to design a home to fit, you know, all kinds of shapes and sizes. Um, but importantly, um, per the power available to all landowners within the Shire, um, they can seek to um, locate development outside of the building envelope, and that needs to be subject to a merits-based assessment, uh, which is the, the, the topic of this report. So just to clarify, they haven't provided a reason um, in, in terms of the comment about the separation distance from the existing shed and water tank. That's an assumption or is it that that's the reason? Um, bear with me, I'll just re-familiarise myself with the application details one moment. So um, I will um, have just accessed our record system and located the, the written justification letter that the applicant submitted. Um, I'm happy to quote from that. It's relatively brief. Um, so the owner has provided the following comments, and I quote, given the size of the existing shed and its location, it has placed limitations on our proposed future build within the existing building envelope. Next point, our vision is to place the property as per the site location document. This area of the block has already been cleared and will mean that we will not have to remove any of the existing large gum trees or the newly planted native trees and shrubs. Point three, since purchasing the block, we have been proactive in planting new native vegetation on the block to encourage native flora and fauna back to the area and have a long-term vision of creating a home that has minimal environmental impact. Uh, next point, we have also installed a large number of solar panels on the existing shed and an oversized inverter to reduce our carbon footprint. Uh, next point, once the site location has been approved by local council, we will be continuing planting large established native flora on our block. Um, last stop point, it is important to us that our proposed building has minimal impact on existing flora and fauna to the area. Thank you, Director. Can I please have a mover for this motion? Thank you, Councillor Strange. Can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? Motion is carried unanimously. 
10.1.5 Development Application Proposed Showroom and Fast Food Takeaway Development, 21 Showrooms and 5 Fast Food Takeaway Tenancies, Lot 806 Southwestern Highway, Byford. Director, I have a question, please, for this item. We have seen commercial developments in our shire previously where they were the majority of showrooms uh, with a few takeaway uh, tenancies and over time have seen the majority of those showrooms disappear and the majority of takeaway food tenancies replace them. Is that going to be the case that once this is developed that, that council has no control over what the tenancies in this area will be and that the owner or the um, the owner of the, the actual development can actually change the usage at any time. Thank you for the for the question, um, Madam President, and certainly um, the issues around what uses are approved and what can happen into the future is an important planning issue. Um, the if the matter did proceed tonight as recommended um, or in a, a form similar to what's recommended, um, the approved uses would be the fast food outlets by five and the 21 showrooms. Um, if an application or if a future applicant um, wanted to change, say, a showroom to become a private recreation, which I guess is commonly what we would classify a gym as or a, um, a health studio as, that would trigger the requirement for a change of use application via the Shire. Um, and so that would be subject to a merits-based assessment. Often um, the key issue is showrooms have a relatively um, generous car parking ratio and we need to be quite careful when those uses change um, because there can be some inadvertent consequences in terms of uh, car parking becoming a shortfall. But the information provided to us was the, the legitimate intent on the applicant is to pursue the, the showrooms and the, the, the five fast food takeaway um, proposals and um, proceed on that basis. Thank you, Director. I don't think it's quite answered the question I have asked. Under the current planning framework, is the ability there if the applicant so chooses to lodge a change of use into the future and turn, say, one of the showrooms into another five fast food outlets, is that allowable under our current planning framework? Uh, thank you, Madam President. No, that wouldn't be allowed without a application being submitted. So there's five, ten, five are tenancies with approved plans. Mm. And so if there wanted to be additional tenancies added to takeaway food outlets, so as to number more than five, that would represent a change to what is approved if council does ultimately recommend and that does approve it. And so anyone can apply for, 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 for what they feel, but it will then be up to officers and um, Council, if delegation requires, to consider that. But the ability is there under the current planning framework for an application to be made to do that? Yes, like if they Thank can you. make an application. Yes, correct. Thank you. Can I please have a mover for this motion? Madam President, I would like to move an alternate motion as earlier circulated. Through the chair. Thank you, Councillor Stroughton. Thank you. Through the chair, in uh, paragraph B, I'd like to include Councillor Coles' additional words, um, that being Council of the, so that uh, it's approved by the Council of the Shire of Serpentine Jaredale. Paragraph B. Thank you, Councillor. And once that's achieved, uh, I have an additional paragraph for you. Uh, that being the applicant shall ensure 
that the design and ongoing management of the development enables conversion of the future development site uh, and thereafter once developed similar sized car parking area to function for community uses on Sundays as they may be proposed at no cost to those community groups proposing them. And that's it, there's no further changes. Thank you, Councillor D'Agostino. Can I please have a, uh, Councillor Stratton, can I please have a second? Thank you, Councillor Coles. Councillor D'Agostino, uh, Councillor Stratton, I have a question in regards to uh, condition U that you have proposed. What is future development site, what what area are you talking about in what you have proposed, what you've put forward? Thank you for the question, Madam President. Um, I should have, uh, I guess, put a figure number, which I will inform you of shortly. If we look at figure six, and we look to the left side, which is the western side, what figure six of page 67. Yeah. Page 67, close to Southwest Highway, in tiny little writing, it's written there, future, future development site. And I think the applicant actually, if I understood them correctly, um, may have referred to it as public open space, but they might have been talking to the the green area south of that road there. Oh, if you look at page figure nine, um, page seventy seven, it's more clearly displayed. And the reason that I've wanted to highlight this location, if I may, uh, that is because it has good exposure to Southwest Highway to attract custom. Um, and of course, or not of course, but the reason why I'm choosing Sundays is to have least disruption to the businesses that occupy that area, but also use that day to increase awareness of the businesses, um, but most, most importantly, to enable that area for community use, which might even be like a farmer's market, um, so as to bring a bit of balance um, to the other food outlets that are there, so maybe a bit more fresh produce would be ideal, but of course that comes up to, comes down to whomever applies to make use of that area. Any community groups? Councillor D'Agostino, I'm doing it now, sorry. Oh, Councillor sorry, yes, my apologies. Um, would you consider uh, amending your motion to reference that figure nine for everyone's clarity? So if you no development problem. site in brackets as identified in figure nine of the report? Something like yes, that. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Enables the conversion of the future de development site in brackets as depicted in figure nine, page 77, close brackets. Thank you. Councillor Coles is a second, are you happy with that? I am, thanks, Ms. Sear. Thank you for your explanation, Councillor Stratton's. Director, can I please ask, has there been any um, indication from the proponent of what that future development site uh, would hold and what it would look like? Uh, thank you for the question, Madam President. Um, the uh, question was raised um, with the applicant, if I recall correctly, very early on in the piece. Um, I believe looking at the configuration of the site, um, when we consider 
make major entries onto main highways. One of the most common things proposed is um, service stations. Um, I would stress, though, that um, this application doesn't indicate or include any detail of that. Um, so I can't say whether those uh, short, medium or long term or even correct um, ambitions for that site, um, whatever is ultimately desired by the applicant will be subject to a planning application um, and would need to be assessed based on that. Thank you. We have a mover and a seconder for this item. Is there anybody opposed? Adam. President, can I ask a quick follow-up question as well? Uh, just a Councilman. quick one to the planning director, just in regards to the uh, statements we heard earlier. Um, it alluded to the landscaping to be done on the southern side of the property. Um, and I do note in the officer's report under uh, Section B, Part 4, that there's going to be a screen wall placed. And in Part H um, of a planting regime for increased density of vegetation. Is there any provisions in here to actually retain some of the existing um, trees in the area? Uh, thank you for the, the question through you, um, Madam President. Certainly um, our um, first approach is to try to uh, retain existing um, where the configuration of development allows it. Um, that southern interface to the, I guess, Willaring Way and to the residents directly on the south side of, of that is um, predominantly where there is a, um, a setback um, to um, the back of the um, showrooms. The um, interface will be certainly made sort of challenging given that the site is a very significantly sloping site and um, as we know with showrooms, they'll have to be largely subject to quite a bit of earthworking. Um, but the short answer is yes, we would try to every opportunity we can to retain existing trees. Um, but there's certainly a strong planning assessment to say we need to get that buffer um, back up to its um, you know, full, uh, I guess, extent to provide for a sympathetic interface. Oh, the, um, actual is there a minimum tree height that would need to be um, implemented as a buffer zone there? Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam President. Thank you um, for the, the question. Um, currently, condition um, I doesn't um, state that, but certainly um, be happy to assist with an alternative if you, if the councillor wanted to, to propose a, a minimum uh, establishment um, of mature trees, um, has been done in in similar matters from what I can recall. With that in mind, Madam President, would I be able to ask Councillor Strong if you would consider um, another slight amendment to? The rec to his recommendation to include a minimum number of trees to be retained or a number of a height of trees to be planted in that area. Councillor Mack, you have the opportunity to put an amendment forward if you choose to. Yes, I'd, I'd like to put forward an amendment for the motion as currently placed, but to add in, and if I could seek the uh, director's guidance on some wording for that. Director? Uh, yeah, thank you, um, Madam President. It's probably um, condition I and um, a Roman numeral number four. Um, all trees um, shall have a minimum height of two metres upon establishment in the area between Willaring Street and the southern
walls of the adjoining showrooms. <laughs> Thank you for that, Director. Would would also be able to like potentially have something put in with a preference being given to retaining some of the mm. existing trees. Oh, sorry, yes, um, yes, sorry, I, I forgot that. And potentially a Roman numeral number five. The Minute Secretary, the Roman numeral number four is actually a new one as well. So it's a, it's new. You're right. They're in condition one with a new. Roman numeral four and now a new Roman numeral five. Yep. Thank you. Where site conditions and earthworks permit. A permit. Site as an S I T E, not as an official. Yeah. I think the director said permit rather than meet. Yeah. Per, permit. Permit. Where? Permit. Yeah. Comma. The retention of existing vegetation to be maximised and preferred. Retention of existing vegetation to be maximised. So change the word the to. Yep. And preferred. And preferred? Preferred. Thank you, Director, and thank you, Minister Secretary. You happy with that, yep. Councillor Matt? Absolutely. Councillors, can I please ask for a seconder for the amendment put forward? Thank you, Councillor Stroughton's. Another question, please. Councillor Atwood. Um, while I don't have any objections to the trees being a minimum of two metres tall, I do have a little bit of a problem with um, trees possibly being planted that are going to turn into rather gigantic trees because we have no, we have the problem now where road birds are uprooted as are our roads. And also, we have problems with limbs. I'm not quite sure how we do it, but should we have a maximum? Because the last thing we want is bloody someone planting gum trees or something there that are going to be 40, 50 foot tall and then fall over and uproot out. And we spend numerous dollars later upgrading our roads because they've dug it, you know, pushed them up. So don't quite know. I'd have to rely on you, Mr. Director, <laughs> if that's all. To be added to, if it's all right with cats, the Mac to be added. Director? Uh, yeah, to assist, um, maybe after Roman numeral four, the first one, and the adjoining showrooms, put in a comma after showrooms. and be suitable to the location given proximity to the public road of Willaring Street and associated verge area. Excuse me, can members of the public gallery please remain quiet? Councillor Mack, are you happy? Are you happy with that change? No, no I'm just yeah, no, just... Councillor Atwell, okay. can members of the public gallery please remain quiet? You do not have the ability to speak during this part of the meeting. Thank you. Madam Chairman, can I just um amend that to say that we do not wish to remove any trees, but any future trees that are planted there are to be of this type. Councillor Mack, are you happy with that extra wording? 
I am happy with that as a reads, if I'm correct in understanding all landscaping plans are still actually to be brought back to council for approval. They come back to the officers. To so the officers, yeah. sorry, correct. Yep. Yeah, they would, based on the way it's currently written, it would be coming back to the officers for assessment based on the condition. Then I'm happy with that wording. Councillor Stroughton, are you happy with that extra wording? Thank you. Is there anybody opposed to this amendment? Councillor Strange? Councillor Mack, would you like to please open debate? Uh, thank you, Madam President. This um, was just a consideration for the residents on that south side of Willaring to try to offer um, as much as possible the retention of the natural trees that are already there. Um, and as such, also trying to offer some more suitable um, buffer zones between the between the showrooms that are there and the properties um, to the south side of Willaring. I apologise, Madam President. I um, preemptively uh, put up my hand in objection to the amendment, but it was to the substantive. And I withdraw my objection to the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Strange. Is there anybody opposed to the amendment that we have before us? The amendment is carried unanimously. We return to the substantive motion. Madam President, can we just give the minute secretary a minute just to add those two points into the new substantive motion, please? We, we had it in the last one. Yes. Since the water plan, the amendment was actually item number one. We have a mover and seconder for the substantive motion. Is there anybody opposed to the substantive motion? Thank you, Councillor Strange. Councillor D'Agostino, are you going to put your hand up as well? Thank you. Councillor Stroughton's, would you like to open debate, please? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, many of you may well have seen with councillors, that is, have seen the back and forth, the communication I've had with the Director of Planning, seeking uh, to my best of my abilities to attend to the 73 objections uh, that residents submitted for this project. Um, I chose, from looking at these, the summary of these objections, which I'll, I'll list as traffic volume, built form and design, appropriateness of land use, increased in crime in the area, removal of the vegetation, and then the last one, health and community imp impacts of fast food development. You would have seen that uh, I did try to find a way to navigate the development away from fast food to other types of food outlets, um, but was clearly told that that is not allowed for a local council. It's not a uh, legal provision. I even engaged with the Cancer, Cancer Council of WA to try to find out if they were aware 
of any examples of how a council area had managed to uh, redirect away from fast food development. And the best they came up was uh, with an appeal to the developers uh, to do their best in that direction, as opposed to just follow a knee jerk fast food development. So um, in the end, um, that is why I have come up with the condition to use the open area, the future development site uh, for community development, uh, leave it to the community or maybe even influence the community as the next stage. Uh, it, they may well find it's a fantastic site. I would like to think that the Food and Farm Alliance might even consider it or some other type of food market, like I said earlier, to help bring a bit of a balance so there's more fresh food. There's plenty of documentation that the more fast food outlets there are, um, then the more propensity it is that they've taken, they are taken up and the more it negatively impacts on the health and well-being of that community. Um, so that is why um, I'm making an effort in this direction. Um, I'm certainly part of the communication from the Director of Planning has also communicated to me uh, that he feels uh, that uh, my condition that I've put forward also is not quite in keeping with the direction of uh, state level planning approval. And as you may have read, fellow councillors, my response to that is I disagree. I do not think we're here to enable um, and to be a be agents for state level planning when that state level planning needs to be improved so that the well-being of our residents can be better considered. Uh, and I further stated that if if this condition was overturned, then I would use it to lobby state government to highlight the inadequacy of the planning provisions that they enable local governments to pursue. And uh, as you would know, fellow councillors, I have pursued this type of path before when it came to people building childcare centres, which I considered in inappropriate locations. And right now we have the state government has, uh, that's been with, again, with the Cancer Council. I've worked on that to influence the state government and they have just closed public submissions to come up with a new planning policy at state level to allow local governments, well, they haven't submitted it, they haven't completed it yet, to allow local governments to better influence where childcare centres can be located and, and away from fast food outlets. So I just see this as a continuation. Um, so I'm not going to be upset if the developer seeks to overturn this. I just think the developer would have missed an opportunity to integrate better with the local community. They may even well find that the use um, for community groups may be the best use better than what they may well have planned. It's giving them an opportunity and uh, it's up to them to take it or not. Like I said, if it's overturned, then I will use it as uh, ammunition to go to state level to try and make a state level change like I've done with the childcare centres. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stratton's. Councillor Coles, would you like to speak or reserve? Yeah, thanks, Madam President. Um, I've had some concerns with this motion and hence why I put forward uh, my very discreet alternate, which was then um, encapsulated with Councillor Stratton's um, amendment as well. Um, this is a challenge for us because it is land that needs to be developed. Um, we need as councillors to listen to our community and the 73 um, objections speak volume to what we're trying to do tonight in terms of this alternate motion. And what that means is basically being masters of our own destiny. So we're trying to put controls in place, probably for a couple of reasons. One is the healthy aspect. So fast food is a concern, and I was um, blown away by the objection that the Cancer Council put in and talking about obesity in children, and that is a concern. Um, whilst we're not the uh, fast food police, I think we need to be responsible and have that um, responsibility as councillors to do the right thing for the community. 
So I believe that the alternate motion does go some way to control what we put in there as council, hence the alternate um, part where any um, fast foods will come back to council for council to um, approve it or not. Hey, the other thing we need to understand too is this is only a responsible authority report and the JDAP, I keep calling it, but it's obviously changed its name now to the Metro Outer Development Assessment Panel. It's a recommendation we're making to them. Um, the reality is, and I acknowledge the email that Councillor Strang sent out last night with that document, and I read that today, and I found it very, very powerful. So we as councillors have a responsibility to approve things in line with policy, in line with legislation, in line with what the state authority wants us to do. If it meets the planning policy and planning rules, then really we have to approve it. What we can do, though, as councils, we can put conditions in place to protect that uh, location. And um, whilst it's a hard task as a councillor, you can't please everyone. Um, certainly, I think this is a middle ground here where we have the control and we can control our own destiny. I don't know what fast food place, places, if any, are interested. We have um, asked that question and we don't know the answer to that question. Um, it would probably be a fair assumption that it won't be Hungry Jack's, considering they're only a couple hundred metres down the road whether McDonald's um, sees there's another need for McDonald's there. I, I don't know. But what I do know is we as councillors can put controls in place, and that's what we're doing here. The other concern I have is the amenity um, and the natural bush that's there. And I think um, it's great when councillors come together. Um, it's great when councillors can have their opinions heard. It's great when councillors feel they feel valued in what they're being, uh, what they put on the table. I think tonight we've done that with um, some amendments on the go to ensure that those 73 applicants, or sorry, those 73 ratepayers that have put um, comments in um, have been listened to. So we've got the vegetation, um, and certainly we're not going to be chopping down trees. I, you know, I'm only one of nine, but I'm sure, or maybe one of six, um, but I'm sure that um, that won't be the case, that uh, we'll be starting to chop down trees. That's not what we do. There is an issue with urban canopy at the moment, so we need to um, retain our green space. And this is a development that can be done um, that's aesthetically pleasing, that will maintain the um, uh, the beautification of the area in terms of uh, the natural uh, landscape as such, and it will give the council the power to determine what goes there. So there's not another Hungry Jacks because we can put conditions in place. So um, I certainly commend the alternate motion. Thank you, Councillor Coles. Councillor Strange. Thank you, Madam President. I respect and appreciate the attempts to make this proposal more palatable by the additional um, conditions. But whilst I appreciate those attempts, I, um, after taking into account the matters required to be taken into account when we decide to apply discretion, the Clause 67 requirements that we are bound to consider, I can't arrive at the same conclusion. I'm of the view that this proposal at its current scale and form uh, generates significant negative impacts for the community and that these negative impacts outweigh the benefits that will result from it. As such, I don't consider the proposal is worth the warranting of discretion to approve it. So whilst it can be approved, it doesn't mean it should be approved. In relation to the matters outlined under Clause 67 uh, that we should be considering, the ones that I found particularly relevant in this one are those of N, which is a general amenity consideration, I consider the development will detract from the amenity of the locality from an environmental character and social perspective. And these are sentiments shared by a significant portion of the local community. I have concerns in relation to uh, matter V, loss of community benefit. I believe that approval of this extent of showroom in this location will reduce benefits to be realised in the Byford Town Centre in the shorter term in terms of a significant drag of activity out of the centre to a peripheral, peripheral location. I consider this will hamper successful placemaking in the town centre for years in terms of achieving the desired level of intensity of activity and mix of uses. I think that this is a loss of benefit to the wider community. In terms of consideration X, impact on the community as a whole, I concur with the concerns surrounding the plethora of fast food outlets. 
and believe there is sufficient science to evidence the poor health impacts that result from excessive provision of takeaway outlets in outer suburban areas as, um, as such that that can reasonably be considered a uh, matter to be factored into our, our determination today. And really importantly, consideration why the submissions received during the consultation period. Why ask people for their comments if you are just going to ignore them when they have concerns about legitimate planning issues, legitimate planning concerns about detraction from amenity in their locality? This is why I can't support the motion before us, and I don't think that discretion should be applied to approve it. Uh, which is why I foreshadow that if this motion is lost, I will move the officers option two in the report uh, with an additional reason uh, being A, the development will result in an unacceptable impact on amenity within the locality from a social, environmental and character perspective, and then followed by the reasons stated with renumber renumbering. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Strange. So any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Stroughton, would you like to close, please? Thank you, Madam President. I completely applaud Councillor Strange's position. I, um, I was expecting uh, reasons why something outside of planning provisions couldn't be done. So I'm absolutely impressed. Um, absolutely. If 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 I thought it viable that we could reshape this development site uh, to something completely different that my vision couldn't come up with, um, that wouldn't be appealed and uh, then approved at a state level, then that is a path that I probably would have taken as well. But from my time as councillor, I have noticed that sometimes you have to go with the flow to a certain point um, and try to make, try to influence the change as best you can. And as I said before, if some of the planning guidelines are ridiculous, then go to the state level to try to make the change there. For this particular project, I could easily see that that land could be put to much worse use. Uh, we certainly wouldn't want to have an industrial area there, for example, with uh, a lot of clanging and banging and oils and greases. Um, so I do agree with the applicants. Um, that's great for employment, local employment, hopefully. Uh, and I try to keep an optimistic view of how this whole development will pan out and so it would ultimately be more acceptable to community members for those even that are opposing it at this moment. As a councillor, we are often put in a position where we need to take a leadership position. Um, so part of my response is seeking to do that as well. Um, I can't, like I said before, I couldn't remove the fast food outlets, the best I can do is try to bring a balance, try to encourage community groups into that space, which may well include fresh food markets as well. Um, so all I can say to conclude is I'm just doing my best to influence it in a direction that I believe is best for the community, given the restrictions and constraints that we've got. Happy to put it to a vote. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stratons. All those favour in the all those in favour of the motion before us? Two, three, four, five. All those against? Motion is carried five, four. Can we please have the votes recorded at the request of Councillor Bias, Minute Secretary? And Councillor Strawdens, why that's occurring? Um, just checking whether you're happy with the reason for the difference to the officer's recommendation, and maybe whether you want to include some words around the landscaping amendment that was made as well. Yeah, thanks, CEO. Certainly, the reasons I submitted before, I'd like to add a further word, which is further. Um, second, second last, second last word. Well-being is further considered. 
Uh, I've been able to read it all in its entirety now. After health and well-being, then uh, the, the just simply add the words and vegetation. In fact, natural vegetation. And I'm happy to finish with that. Thank you. Item 10.1.6, proposed child minding centre, lot 51116, Warrington Road, Byford. Can I please have a mover for this motion? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Councillor Strawtons. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? Motion is carried unanimously. Item 10.1.7, proposed radio, TV and communications installation, telecommunications tower and associated infrastructure, lot 116245 Keenan Street, Whitby. Can I please have a mover for the motion? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Can I have a seconder, please? Director, I have some questions, please, if I may. In all the times that this item has come to Council, and all the time that I have been on Council, I have not seen another telecommunication tower on land that is urban deferred or, or zoned for urban development. In all the reports that we've had, we have not seen anything about what will happen with the land ownership once these blocks are subdivided for development into a urban residential area. What can or will happen in the case if this is approved in its current form? Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, any leasehold interest can be registered on the title of the land which it's located, so as to bound, bind, bound, bind future landowners um, for their awareness of that lease. So um, a leasehold interest is that one step down from a freehold interest in land. Um, so it would bind um, anyone who purchased number 116. Um, or a portion of 116 if it was in inadvertently or eventually subdivided in the long term. Um, thank you. Thank you. Given to the west of this site, there is the gazetted unmade road of Robinson Road. Is there anywhere in the future where we see that that road will be a made road? Thank you, um, Madam President, uh, for the question. Um, I would just, I guess, make the, the note that we haven't yet received a local structure plan for this part of the, the future Mundajong urban cell. Um, as we often see the case, um, many of our unmade road reserves um, actually are prevented from being constructed because of the important vegetation they've um, uh, essentially had, o had develop over time. Um, but it would really be up to an applicant to test whether or not um, a uh, construction of Robinson Road all the way through um, would be possible or could be possible or, or not. Um, so based on what the information I have at this stage, it's just not possible to tell. Thank you. A further question, Director. Is there any structure plans across this area for the urban development into the future? 
Uh, thank you, Madam President. So the Whitby Urban Cell, um, which is being developed um, at the moment, has an adopted structure plan uh, that dates sort of 2013, 2014. Um, there's also adopted structure plans um, to the between Taylor Road and, and Tonkin Highway. Um, in terms of this um, quadrant of, say, south of Kiernan Street, uh, west of Evelyn Street, east of the rail, um, and north of Evelyn Street, there isn't, hasn't been a, a proposed structure plan advanced for it. Thank you. My next question, given that there is no structure plan across this area and that the lease will bind any future owners of this property, how will that work once this area does have a structure plan across the top of it and it is subdivided into smaller blocks as we see in the Whitby Estate area? Thank you for the, the question, Madam President. And that's been probably one of the, the key things that the report has um, analysed. So on page 130 of the agenda, um, we talk about this land and this location, particularly where it adjoins an existing rail corridor. Um, the planning approach to um, areas of land which are undeveloped running parallel or along a rail corridor is the preference is to set back development from that rail corridor so as to minimise um, the impact by way of noise and vibration on future residents. So um, the particular circumstances that this site identified um, were quite central to our assessment of it um, and officers um, have taken the view that the corner or the northwest corner of the subject land um, would be unlikely to be subdivided down into small lots given the um, proximity and adjoining the uh, rail corridor and the unmade road reserve. So what would you see happen to that area? Uh, thank you, Madam President. It's, it's quite hard to say, but um, ultimately it would be for an applicant to propose how they're looking to deal with all of the, the opportunities and constraints that are associated with their land. Um, all landowners are required to cede open space to the Crown as part of subdivision. They also have to manage draining constraints, drainage as part of in creating uh, impervious roads and other um, paved services. Um, and they are probably the two immediate thoughts that come to mind. Thank you. So we could see uh, this area in time into the future subdivided down and succeeded to the Crown as public open space with a tower in, in the public open space area in a park. Um, thank you, Madam President. I really think that we're unable to conclude that that would be the likely outcome. Um, what we've said as a, a as a planning perspective is it's unlikely we would see residential development right up adjoining the existing freight railway um, and um, potentially future passenger rail. Um, and there's a rel relatively well established state planning policy framework that says um, the expectation is to set back development from um, rail corridors um, where rail development, where development doesn't currently um, exist. So I really can't provide the likely outcome of what would happen in this area. Um, a landowner could choose never to develop if they um, wanted that to be the case. Um, we're looking at this one from, I guess, the merits it's proposed in the application and um, hopefully we've been able to identify that in the um, report on the agenda. Thank you, Director. My last question, what other locations were investigated as part of this uh, application to the Shire? What other locations? Um, so the um, 
applicant um, as required by um, the code of practice must look at opportunities for um, co-location in the first instance. So they addressed opportunities for co-location. Um, there was no opportunity seen. Um, it was then up to them to utilise and choose a site. Officers particularly do not give any advice or recommendation um, to um, land on a site. That's up to an applicant to do their due diligence and to submit their application so that we can undertake our assessment. Thank you, Director. I do have one last question, sorry. Uh, in the time frame of when this was advertised, it my understanding is that it went out to a uh, people within a, a, a zone of 500 metres from the development site, which to my working out only picks up probably half a dozen residents within the Whitby area. Would I be right in, in that? Uh, thank you for the question. So, there was a 500 metre radius plus a sign um, on site plus promotion through your say SJ um, plus details on the Shire's website. Thank you. Councillors, do we have a seconder for the motion before us? Thank you, Councillor Stroughton's. Is there anybody opposed to this motion? Thank you, Councillor Coles. Councillor Duggan, would you like to open debate, please? Certainly, thanks, Madam President. Uh, thanks very much, Director, for um, your explanation and um, to Madam President for asking the questions. I found that information very, very useful. Certainly, this has been the site that's been identified as being the most appropriate um, for coverage and also for ability to access in a fire risk area. Um, it has been uh, put forward by the, uh, by the owners of the land um, and I hear the concerns of the residents um, that, that they spoke this evening and after seeing the site myself numerous times now, 53 metres south of Kernan Street, and keeping in mind there is a uh, landscape plan that is to be included, I'm hoping will give significant coverage for them to be able to um, maintain their rural outlook that they value so, great, so greatly. I also understand that ideally, we don't have monopoles in urban developments. But the truth is, if we were going to have monopoles not in urban developments, well, then we wouldn't have any monopoles in our cities. So there has to be a compromise. I can see where the officers worked very closely with the landowners and with Telstra to try and ensure that um, the most appropriate site has been identified and ultimately our residents need this. They have waited, the Whitby resident, residents have waited too long for this. So for that reason, I support the motion. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Duggan. Councillor Stroughton, would you like to speak or reserve? I reserve. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Councillor Coles, would you like to speak against, please? Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, this again, is a uh, tough uh, motion um, and it's been said tonight, I think a member of the public said it and others at the table here say the same things, that as council we need to make tough decisions. My heart goes out to those residents who have poor mobile phone re uh, reception and poor mobile phone coverage. I acknowledge that. Um, there's parts of the Shire that there is black spots. There's parts of the Shire, um, certainly in the North Ward, um, where you don't have phone reception. In actual fact, a phone call that I was uh, on today dropped out um, near Eurythmic Drive in Byford. So it's a problem throughout the Shire. So what do we do as councillors? We as councillors need to act on information that is accurate. We as councillors need to make decisions that are in line with the code of conduct or the oath that we um, gave as councillors. Um, and specifically, 
um, I've done that now some three times. Um, I did that um, on the 23rd of October 2017, the 21st of October 2021, and then 24th of October 2022. And if I can, the declaration of elected member of council is the name of the Shire. Having been elected to the office of council of the Shire of Serpentine Jarrod, I'll declare that I take the office upon myself and will duly, faithfully, honestly, and with integrity fulfill the duties of the office of the people in the district according to the best of my judgment and ability and observe the local government rules of conduct regulations 2007. I first signed that on the 23rd of October 2017. The reason I say that is I sit in this place now after this matter coming to council in November 2022. I can't speak ilk of or go against the decision made by council, otherwise I'll be in trouble. But what I would say is for councillors that have the statements in front of them, I would ask you to read over paragraph one of the comment or the statement that Ms Baldwin gave. There are some concerns in that statement and there's some concerns that I agree with. Suffice to say, this came back to council for revocation motion. The reason it came back to a revocation motion is because information that was given at the time of council making decision objectively may not have been true. And I can't take that any further. Suffice to say, read paragraph one of Ms Baldwin's statement. The reason it was deferred and I have the minutes here of the meeting in February, was so pending investigation into issues raised by neighbouring residents. I asked that question last Monday in this place about what has been done, and the response I got was that Mr and Mrs, the proponent, sorry, my name escapes, their name escapes, and I'll get it in a sec, Mr and Mrs Healy, apologies, um, were given information by Shire staff to make a complaint. Now, that's not an investigation. So here we are, and notwithstanding the concerns raised by residents in Whitby in the area of poor mobile phone reception, I honestly empathise with them. But here we are as councillors now trying to go back and make a decision on something that was brought to us in November. Information has been alleged. And we now sit here with no investigation. We sit here with people like Ms Baldwin, who's made an objection to the Shire in relation to the tower, and we hear nothing back. As ratepayers, they hear nothing back from the Shire. They have made an objection and they hear nothing back. It's not lost to me, councillors, that any email we send, down the bottom of the email, it has a little banner promoting Shape Our Future. And part of that Shape Our Future banner, it says, your voice matters. To have your say, click here. I don't know if Mr and Mrs Baldwin got an email and they clicked here because their voice has not been heard, quite simply. Now, you can balance that with people in Mundajong and Whitby saying that they need better phone reception. Yes, they do, and I empathise with them. But how can we sit in this place as councillors and make a decision on something such as this when we don't know the facts? We don't know the information. There has been no investigation done. We're now sitting here approving something that potentially could have been approved back in November. Well, in fact, it was approved back in November. It was revoked. So I acknowledge that we need better mobile phone reception. I acknowledge that there's people that have small businesses in this area that are struggling. But we don't work for Telstra. We don't get dictated to by a corporation such as Telstra. We work for our ratepayers. It's quite simple as that. Go back and have a look at the oath that we made when we were all sworn in, and we are here to act with integrity for the benefit of our ratepayers. Whilst I again empathise with the residents for having poor phone coverage, it is not us, our job as councillors to try and rectify that now with the information that we have that is inaccurate, the information that we have is wrong, and there is no investigation done about allegations done. There are ratepayers who are not happy with this location. Their views have fallen on deaf ears. We have Mr and Mrs Healy who are not happy, and again, it appears their concerns are raised on deaf ears. And quite simply, it's not good enough to be given a piece of paper to say, hey, if you're not happy to say, make a complaint. We, or the ratepayers, deserve better from us. Thank you.
Thank you, Councillor Coles. Any other councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Duggan, would you like to close, please? Thanks, Madam President. Thanks, Councillor Coles. Um, firstly, I, I certainly feel that I have heard the residents who have presented here this evening. Um, and I do, like I say, with my whole heart, I hope that that landscape plan is appropriate and it gets viewed as such by our shire officers to make sure that it is um, to let them retain their, their rural outlook that they want. I have talked to the director for on a number of occasions about this and we can talk around in circles and we always come back to the same place and that is that this is the place that was determined by the property owners by Telstra to be the best place for this monopole. So with that it is a tough decision but it is one that I feel that we have to make this evening and that is to support the motion. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Duggan. All those in favour of this motion? Two, oh, all those against? One, two, three, four. With the casting vote, motion is carried. Thank you. Can you have the votes recorded, please, Madam President? Minute Secretary, can we please have the votes recorded at the request of Councillor Duggan? Thank you, Chancellor. Yeah. Councillor D'Agostino voted against the motion. Thank you, but all against. Councillor Atwell, the motion was carried 4-4 with a casting vote. I'd like to move uh, a motion to adjourn the meeting for 10 minutes for a bathroom break. Can I please have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Duggan. All those in favour? Councillor Degasino, you're right. All those against? Thank you, Councillor Bias. Motion is carried. We will reconvene at 9.43 p.m. I want to quickly ask for all the reasons to be um, lots of the the Because I think when you walk up in the office, you want to be done by your reasons they Well, there you go. <laughs>